Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, I'm Ambrosia Carey and I bring to you time-saving tips in the salon, including haircuts and collar application. Today we're gonna to be focusing on a haircut, specifically French haircutting. So let's go ahead and get started and I will show you some steps along the way and I'll also walk you through things so you know how you can cut down timing in the salon. Efficiency is such a big thing and when it comes to haircutting, I'm gonna show you how you can do a haircut beginning to end in less than a half an hour. So let's get started. For French hair cutting, we stand eye level so we can actually, uh, her hair is really long, so obviously it's not eye level, like I'd have to get down like this. But the important part is I'm cutting as close to her body as possible. She wants to retain as much length as she can. So when it comes to taking off the length, if you actually get a little bit closer in, if I pull all of this straight down and I look at the ends here, you can see where we need to take about an inch off the bottom to catch everything up. So I'm just gonna square that off first. I'm gonna have her tip her head forward so I can make a nice clean line against her body. And I'm gonna cut on top of my fingers so I can see where my scissors are heading. As I bring the next section down, same thing, cutting right on top of my hand. And matching the other side up as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pull everything to the back, squaring it off right against her body and looking one last time to make sure that everything feels good. We wanna be able to see exactly where that hair is gonna fall on her body. And if she's sitting down, the chair is gonna be in the way. Her hair is so long, I would be pulling this hair over the chair and then you're over directing the hair and then you're gonna have some underhang that's gonna fall out. So now you can see, even when I just comb that straight down, it's nice and clean looking. So now I'm gonna divide it down the center and we're gonna face one another. And then I'm gonna have her turn her head to the side because again, I wanna cut as close to her body as possible. I'm gonna show you two different scenarios for this cut. Number one, I'm gonna cut this to the front of her here. I'm gonna cut as close to her body in the front here on this side. You want to make sure that you're not creating a new design line. So you can see that underhang hair right there. I just wanna cut that to clean it. And then I'll continue her line through the rest of the front. So just clean that part up. And I'm gonna bring everything straight down from where it lives. Tiniest amount to clean up through there. Checking it one last time. She has a little bit of overhang. And then I'll go into her framework. Remember, most of the framing was done when her hair was dry. Now all I have to do is trace over it and make sure that it's uh, all blending in because that was more of a rough cut. There we go. Now she's nice and squared off. I'm gonna bring this hair forward right in front of her ear. I kind of like to go for two finger widths in front of the ear for the framing. And again, the length in the front is fine. So I'm gonna let that fall out and I'm tracing back over these front pieces. Just cleaning that line up. I don't want to take too much length off because I don't want to wipe the front out. I'm going to show you the other way that you can actually cut the sides. So I'm going to start her to the back. This time around, I'm going to have her turn her head to the side and I'm going to cut against her back. So when I'm teaching classes, a lot of people ask me, well, how do you cut the front of the hair if she's like well endowed or like if it's full here, especially for male hairstylists who are not comfortable with cutting right where the breasts are. Should we say breasts or boobs? <laughs> okay, so just to avoid the chest area, I'm gonna just continue this line on. I'm over directing the front to the back. The only thing that I wanna check when I'm done is because I'm over directing that hair from the front to the back and squaring it off, I may notice that this side is slightly longer than the front, the other side, but I'm gonna check that later. So again, I'm gonna do her framework, two finger widths in front of the ear. I'm gonna throw the rest of this hair out. And I'm still gonna do it over her shoulder. So my scissors are gonna be pointed straight out the ground and I'm going, I'm just tracing back over it again. So light skimming. Again, I don't wanna wipe that front out. I just want to have a nice progression of openness around the face so that there's mo movement in the texture. 
that we built. Okay, now I'm going to split it down the center once again, and we're gonna face one another. So I'm gonna turn all the way around this way. This is the part where I just wanna see if she's um, leveled out from one side to the other. So if I bring this straight down and I just match those two sides up, uh, just like I, what I was saying, I was predicting this side is slightly longer. So I'm gonna have her turn her head this direction and I'm gonna pull this again close to her body. And you can kind of see where it starts to go short to long. So I'm just gonna square this off once again around the front. Now I'm gonna look at her again. Yeah, now we're square, now we're good. And then one last thing I'm gonna pull this for because remember when her hair was dry, I was over directing all this hair. So you can see right here, it's a little bit shorter on that side than on this side here. So I'm going to point cut to match. And I'm gonna over direct all this stuff forward and make sure that there is a continuation of that open line around the face. So framing work, making it slightly more open. This is the part that's gonna serve as a lot of volume and over direction when I'm blow drying. Right now I'm just looking for even balance on both sides. So this side needs to be carved just a tiny bit more. All right, that feels pretty good to me. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna look at her layering. So going to seat. So this is called exterior. I'm taking her first layer around her face, AKA her framing, and the fingers are exiting the head. So this is called exterior. And I'm doing a continuation of that exterior layer because this is what's going to dictate where the layers fall at the bottom of the head. I don't wanna take any of her existing layer any shorter. So I am using this layer that I cut from over directing when it was dry as a reference point. And my fingers are exiting the head. So there's no guide for this. Um, the only guide that I'm really referring to is what I cut when the hair was dry. And again, no guide for that at all. So I'm just going with the hair that was previously cut and I'm cutting an exterior layer with it. That's gonna give her more movement. It's gonna help her with her texture, especially when we go in to round brush it and give her volume through the top of her head. This is gonna help support that groundwork that we're putting in. You can see the previous line that I cut before. If you can't see your previous section and you took too much in there, your section was too large. Typically with finer hair, you can take a slightly larger section because you can see your work more. On thicker hair, it's harder to, to recognize it. You take a tiny bit more hair from the previous section. Go here, exterior. And there it is at the very end. And as I round out to the very front, there's not gonna be as much hair to cut through here. Taking it all the way up, I'm over directing that hair because I wanna preserve length and I'm continuing with my exterior line. You can see when I drop it down, I only have literally four hairs to cut. <laughs> so I don't wanna wipe that out. That's another reason why I'm going over directing. The more you wanna keep length, the more you wanna over direct it. So I'm gonna over direct the entire front portion. Then when I get to the ears and the back of the head, I'll change my angle again. So I'm gonna draw this straight up, continue my exterior line, freshen that piece up, drop this out. I'm gonna square this hair off that I just cut. This is gonna be my guide now for the back. But I'm gonna skip over this, I'm gonna go over to this side and do the same thing here. Right in front of the ear. Basically, we're at the top of the ear right now. And I'm gonna over direct all this hair straight up. Continue my exterior line and cut into some of that and do it one last time 
to the very front. There probably won't be any hair to cut here because her framing is there. So we just wanna do this just to make sure we got it. Okay, again, there's like three hairs. <laughs> and I'm gonna divide some of that hair that I already cut. I'm gonna throw it to the back here. This is going to become my guide for that back section. Because we have more hair on the side, I am gonna change the angle and instead of over directing up, I'm gonna pull everything straight out from the head and I'm gonna continue my exterior line. Do you remember how my fingers were exiting the head at a 45 degree angle? I'm gonna do the same thing back here, 45 degree angle. And you can see now that that is her guide, that's her length and I'm just bridging that gap together. So I'm bridging the gap between length and her layers to give her more movement at the bottom and it'll look a little less shelved off that way too. I am using the wide tooth of my comb because her hair has a little bit of a mixed texture to it. And so I don't want it to be too harsh of a line as I'm cutting it. So this could be seen as a different way of cutting texture into the ends. Rather than getting the ends perfectly tight and taut with your comb and going in and point cutting and chipping away, if you actually just use the wide tooth of a comb, it'll relax the hair in certain areas um, and that will give it less of a blunt edge. So again, rather than going like this with the tightness of the comb and point cutting it, I'm just cutting a nice clean crisp line, but using the wider tooth of a comb so that way it's not a really tight section. And when you pull it, you can actually see the wave inside of the hair. And that's okay, we're just going with that. And barely anything through here. The last thing I wanna do is some cross-sectioning. So the way I wanna do cross-sectioning here is I wanna make sure that the front and the back talk. Meaning if she throws her hair to one side or another, I don't want there to be an overhang. I want there to be a nice blend. So if I take the front, part of her hair, the top part of her hair into the back, right where the crown is, and I over direct everything, then I'm just gonna check the very ends right here and she's lined up. So I don't need to do anything. That was a bad example. I was gonna see if there's anything to cut off, but we're gonna do it on the sides as well. So I'm gonna take the sides. So now you've got sides, front, top, and back. You're bringing it all together. <laughs> Okay, there's a little something to cut here. So that's her length on the sides. This is the disconnection between the top and the sides. Cause remember, I cut the front differently than the back. So right here, I'm gonna over direct this this way and I'm gonna blend those two sides in together. Just by cutting that little piece, she won't have an overhang from the front to the back. Cause remember we over directed this. So that is really, if we wanna talk about a bridging layer, that's actually the best way to describe a, br a bridging layer is you had layers that were different in the front than in the back. By doing that one little step, you're bridging the gap between the front and the back. Same thing here, if I over direct this, then you can kind of see right here, the top and the sides, and I'm just gonna cut that bridging layer right between the middle. Now she's ready for the blow dry. 